We start tonight with a disturbing story out of Tallapoosa County. Alabama police say this young girl was found walking along a road after she escaped her captor. Investigators say the victim led deputies to a trailer with two decomposing bodies inside. 37 year old Jose Pascual Reyes was arrested in a town about 25 miles away. This week's episode has been brought to you by NordPass, a simple and easy to use password manager created by NordVPN. Do you or a loved one use your Facebook account to log into every new website, app, or online store just because it's faster and easier? Have you ever wondered what could happen if your Facebook account is hacked? Well, let us tell you. Hackers could get a free shot at all of your accounts that are linked to your Facebook. And we're not even talking about leaking your personal information and banking info. There are far more serious crimes that could happen. This is where NordPass comes in. NordPass is a zero knowledge password manager, which means that no one else but you can see what's in your encrypted password vault, not even the NordPass team. With NordPass, you can safely store all of your passwords in one place. There's no need to memorize all of them. And you can be at ease knowing that all of your accounts are safe and secure. Visit NordPass pass.com slash the misery machine or use code the misery machine at checkout to get an additional month free that's nordpass.com slash the misery machine for an additional month free thanks and back to the episode on monday august 1st of 2022 the tallapoosa county sheriff's office received a call from a motorist at 8 26 a.m reporting that a 12 year old girl was found alone wandering aimlessly down county road 34 just south of dadeville alabama after being brought to an area hospital to be treated, doctors noticed that the young girl, who has not been named by authorities for her own safety, presented with a few unsettling sets of injuries. Her wrists were covered in bruises and lesions, as if she had been restrained in some fashion, and the silver braces which covered her teeth were broken. What was odd about this was the fact that the girl didn't have any complementary injuries, which would explain how her braces ended up broken. I'm sure some of you might have had braces growing up and know some of the injuries you can get from them. Some people end up with bloody lips just from bumping themselves in the mouth. While this isn't everyone's experience, it should be noted that braces are pretty hard to break. After speaking with the girl, authorities soon learned that things were gonna take a much darker turn. She led the police to a mobile home located at 3547 County Road 34 in Dadeville, Alabama, where she had allegedly been held prisoner for up to a week. While in captivity, her mother's boyfriend, 37-year-old Jose Paulino Pascal Reyes, an undocumented immigrant from Mexico, kept her tied to a four-post bed. Reyes kept her sedated with alcohol and would allegedly essay the young girl. Reyes was in the country illegally after being deported on December 14, 2014 and returning without proper documentation. It wasn't clear when he last entered the United States, but he had been living in the mobile home since February with a 12-year-old girl, her mother, Sandra Vasquez Ceja, and her 14-year-old brother, whose name had not been released by authorities, but has been listed under the initials AOGV. Sandra and her two kids entered the United States from Mexico in 2017 and remained after requesting asylum, but their claims had yet to be decided by immigration officials. All occupants are alleged to have been living there since February of 2022. The 12 year old decided to make a break for it while her captor was at work at a construction site in nearby Auburn, Alabama, roughly a half an hour drive southeast on Route 280. To escape, the young girl managed to chew through the restraints keeping her in her prison, which is how she managed to break her braces. After being discovered wandering County Road 34, the 12 year old was now safe and in the hands of the Tallapoosa County Sheriff's Office. But one question remained where was her mother, Sandra, and her 14 year old brother? Unfortunately, officials were about to find out. After a thorough search of the mobile home the following day, the mutilated and decomposing bodies of 34-year-old Sandra and the young girl's 14-year-old brother were discovered. The remains were taken to the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences for autopsies and for official identification. Reports indicated that Sandra had been smothered with a pillow on or around July 24th, which was the same day that police considered the girl officially abducted. Her brother, however, met a more gruesome fate that same day. He had been bludgeoned. Reyes allegedly beat this boy to death with his bare hands. Both of their bodies had been mutilated, chopped up at their joints and cut into pieces as a crude effort to dispose of them as evidence. 
Some reports indicated that portions of the underside of the mobile home had been damaged in an effort to stash their remains. Reyes, who was arrested at his job site in Auburn by U.S. Marshals, was charged with two counts of capital homicide, two counts related to the mistreatment of Sandra and her son's remains, and one count of first-degree kidnapping in connection with the surviving 12-year-old girl. The court documents alleged that the intent of the kidnapping was to violate or essay the young girl. Tallapoosa County District Attorney Jeremy Durr said during a press conference that he feels that there will be several more charges to follow once the investigation has concluded. Now, it should be mentioned that some sources claim that Reyes has three counts of capital homicide. With the early stages of any case, it is possible for official sources to get information wrong. But if the three counts of capital homicide are indeed correct, that would suggest to us that a third body has been found that hasn't been officially disclosed. Reports also indicated that other adults lived in the mobile home alongside Reyes and the Seha family but it was unknown whether they were complicit in these barbaric acts or even if they were aware about what had taken place at all. Additionally, it was not reported whether the 12-year-old girl had known the fates of her family members prior to her escape. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a small ranch-style home and briefly a mobile home for a few months during my senior year. If two people had been killed and their bodies stored in the home during the hot Alabama summer, there would be no way that it could possibly have gone unnoticed. I took the liberty of searching weather.com for July 24th to August 2nd of this year, and almost every day, Dadeville, Alabama had reached the 90s. Additionally, the mobile home was small, and the walls were more than likely paper thin. There was no way that it would go unnoticed that there was a 12-year-old being held captive in a bedroom. Finally, if the adults somehow still had no idea what had transpired, overlooking the evidence I've already presented, one would still think that they might have questioned where their three housemates disappeared to. It should be noted that Reyes has yet to be tried and is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Therefore, all statements made are alleged. Not a lot of information has been released as of the date of this recording, but one possibility that has been speculated is that the other adults in the home could be undocumented immigrants themselves. And due to this, if it is indeed true, they could have feared deportation if they chose to report the crimes. With situations like this, it's also important to consider the possibility of a potential trafficking element at play here. Let us know in the comments section what you think happens and if there are any other factors at play that we might have missed. Reyes is currently being held at the Tallapoosa County Jail. He was denied bond during a recent bond hearing. Due to his immigration status, U.S. Marshals, the Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI are also involved in this case. He is currently being represented by attorneys Mark Carlton and William Crutchfield of Carlton, Crutchfield & Maddox. Being appointed two attorneys is apparently normal in Alabama court proceedings when a defendant is facing charges of capital homicide. Reyes also has the option of having an interpreter for his court hearings at the cost of $40 per hour. As this story is still in its beginning stages, we'll be sure to keep an eye out for updates. But it should be noted that given the fact that the prime suspect in this case is in the custody of Homeland Security, we may never get any new updates for this case. The 12-year-old girl is now in the custody of CPS and is being heralded as a hero for her brave escape. According to the Tallapoosa County Sheriff Jimmy Abbott, she is safe now, and so we want to keep her that way.